In this video, we're going to draw the Van Smoot theory diagram for the N2 molecule, and then we're going to introduce the concept of hybridization. All right, uh, let's try to focus here on the N2 molecule. All right, so that's what we uh, have to understand. And uh, as always, we start with the electronic configurations of the separated atoms. Okay, so the separated atoms are nitrogen and nitrogen, and then the electronic configurations are going to be uh, helium, uh, 2s2, 2p3. And it's identical for each one of the two atoms, of course. And then to try to start to visualize how the overlaps between these uh, atomic orbitals are going to be, uh, we draw the box electronic configurations. Okay, so that would be uh, your 2s, and these are your 2p's. And then uh, you have five electrons, two in the 2s, and then one, two, three. Okay, notice that according to Hunt rule, those should have parallel spins, and they should also be in different uh, orbitals. Okay, uh, this is now the electronic configuration for the second atom. All right, so we understand that uh, bonds take place when there's an overlap between atomic orbitals. Okay, so that you can never have more than two electrons uh, uh, from an overlap. Okay, so we look like it looks like uh, this is not very different from F two, which we uh, which we drew in the prior video. Okay, in F two you actually had that these orbitals were occupied. Okay, doubly occupied. And we actually had an overlap between those uh, two orbitals. In this case, it looks like we're going to have a possibility for more overlaps than what we actually had in F2, because uh, these orbitals are singly occupied. So even if you have overlap between these two and those two, uh, you would not be violating the polyclusion principle as you only have two electrons tops per overlap. Okay, so let's see how that is going to look like uh, when we draw the atoms uh, with the shapes of the orbitals. Okay, so we we'll draw here the 2s orbital that is fully occupied, and then you would have here the uh, 2px, which is singly occupied, and 2pz, which is also singly occupied, and then we'll have the 2py coming in and out of the plane, which is also singly occupied, and notice that all of the spins are parallel, okay, which is something that needs to happen according to Hunt's rule. Okay, we draw uh, the other nitrogen atoms separately at an infinite distance. Um, that's the 2s, and again, you're going to have exactly the same orbital structure, okay, with the 2px pointing in the same direction as the 2px here. Okay, the 2pc, okay, that's the z-axis, which means that it has to be the same for both. That's the 2pc, you have one electron in that orbital. Okay, and this will be the 2py coming in and out of plane, and you have another electron. Right, so we can start again to envision how the overlaps are going to uh, take place. Okay, so when we bring these two atoms together, it looks like you're gonna have, going to have an overlap between the 2pc, uh, which is this orbital, and the 2pc, which is that orbital. Okay, and those electrons uh, uh, can form a bond, uh, but the spins have to be empty parallel, okay, according to Pauli exclusion principle. Now, what, what will happen is that you now have uh, uh, 2px pointing in this direction, 2px point in the direction, they are singly occupied, so uh, overall they only have two electrons, which uh, might make it possible for them to overlap, and the same thing is going to happen for the 2py. Okay, so let's actually try to draw how that uh, actually happens. All right, so let me erase this to make room. Okay, I'm going to draw here uh, the nitrogen atom now forming bonds with the other nitrogen atom, that will be 2s. Okay, and then you have here uh, the 2pz, that's the 2pc orbital, and it has one electron, uh, right? So here is a region of space where uh, the wave functions overlap, the spins of the electrons are in parallel, and that means that the two electrons can be simultaneously attracted by the two nuclei that gives rise to a covalent bond, and uh, it's a head-on overlap, okay, and we call that sigma. Right now, we're not done with this because we also have uh, other types of orbitals that can form bonds. Here we have the 2px. Okay, notice that we have x here, x there is the same direction of space, up and down. And you also have uh, one electron that I'm going to choose to uh, put with spin down, okay, to see if we can form an overlap here. So the idea is that now these two orbitals are actually uh, are pointing in the same direction of space, up and down. Okay, so, uh, well, we know that they cannot uh, overlap head-on, that's what the two PCs do, uh, but the question is whether they can overlap side-on and form an overlap that looks like this. 
right? So that so that's uh, that's a possibility. It's a new possibility. That is that these two uh, orbitals can uh, overlap now side on, not head on, and that's actually what we call a pi overlap or a pi bond. Okay. So an easy way to distinguish the sigma overlaps and the pi overlaps. Again, the sigma overlaps are head-on overlaps, the uh, pi or or overlaps are side-on. Another way to see this is to look at the symmetry of the electrons. Okay, but we actually, uh, when we look at this molecule along the internuclear axis, we see that the sigma overlap has a cylindrical symmetry, right? So you trace the cylinder, and the probability of finding the electron in that cylinder is identical. However, if you look at the pi overlap, that's not the case. When you look at this side on and try to trace a cylinder, there will be electron density here, but when you come to, when you come to an angle of 90 degrees, there's no electron density right there. Okay, but then you come back on down, and there is uh, electron density right here, but not there. So it does not have cylindrical symmetry. That is a hallmark of a pi bond as well. Okay, at least we know that it's not a sigma bond, which again has to, has to have cylindrical symmetry. Now, that's not the whole story here. Uh, notice that for uh, nitrogen, you also have a 2PY orbital coming in and out of the plane. Okay, and the question is whether you can form uh, another uh, pi overlap. And the answer is yes. Notice that now those two orbitals are coming uh, in and out of the plane. And again, they can overlap as long as the two electrons have antiparallel spins and you only have two electrons. Okay, so. Uh, there is going to be another overlap, which is hard to draw because, again, these orbitals really are coming in and out of the plane. The way that we usually do this is something like this. Okay, and we we'll label that as a pi overlap. Okay, so this will be uh, the valence on theory diagram for uh, the nitrogen molecule. What we see is that this molecule, the bond between the two atoms, uh, uh, is caused by three overlaps, one sigma and two pi overlaps. Okay, in other words, uh, we can say that this molecule has a triple bond, uh, one sigma bond and two pi bonds. And notice that I, the data agrees well, quite well with uh, some other uh, theories of bonding, like Lewis dot structures, uh, where actually you see now uh, that triple bond. Now, Lewis dot structures are, are very useful in that uh, they predict correctly uh, many aspects of molecules, like uh, shapes and number of bonds and so forth. But actually, they don't give you a lot of insight into how those uh, bonds are formed. In the case of valence bond theory, now we have a beautiful description of how the bonding really is. We can actually see that from the atomic orbitals, we can draw a bond in a skin that gives you a triple bond, okay, in which one of the bonds happens to be a sigma overlap and two of the bonds happen to be pi overlaps. Okay, so that triple bond does exist, or is sensibly captured also by valence bond theory, but you have much more nuance. Uh, to this than before. Okay, so um, uh, that is the end to diagram for uh, Valsmann theory. In the next few videos, we're actually going to see the concept of uh, hybridization. And uh, we're going to see that uh, sometimes what happens is that uh, when you try to describe the shape of molecules, for example, uh, uh, molecules like CH4 or uh, other organic molecules, it turns out that uh, proceeding with uh, the orbital structure as what we have done uh, right here does not predict the shape of those molecules. Okay, so for example, if you take a look at carbon, okay, you draw the, the box electron configuration for carbon, it would look like this. Uh, it has four electrons. Okay, so it's a 2s2, 2p2. All right, so then what we expect uh, the bonding pattern to be for carbon would be, well, carbon will form uh, two bonds because it has two singly occupied uh, orbitals, and those bonds should be actually perpendicular to each other. Okay, that's kind of the bonding pattern that you would expect from carbon from the natural atomic orbital description, these box diagrams, okay? But for example, when you think about the, uh, at the meth methane molecule, you actually don't have only two bonds that are 90 degrees from each other. You actually have four bonds, not two, four, and the geometry is very, uh, is very different. Uh, again, you expect those bonds to be 90 degrees from each other, but it turns that in the uh, methane is a tetrahedral molecule, and the angle between uh, uh, those bonds actually happens to be 109 degrees. Okay, this tetrahedral, uh, where these two bonds will be in the plane of the whiteboard, this one will be coming out, this one will be going in, and again, the angle is approximately about uh, 109 degrees or so. And so it turns out that um, uh, the normal uh, atomic orbital description 
of uh, this series of, of molecules okay, actually fails to capture something as simple as methane. Instead, what we actually have to do is, is assume those atomic orbitals, the 2s and the 2p's, rearrange or hybridize to generate new atomic orbitals, which are called hybrid, and then from those hybrid orbitals, you can then try and, and go and explain the balance of theory diagrams of all those molecules. Okay, so that's what's uh, coming up in the next few videos, where we will see sp3, sp2, and sp hybridization.